So here we are, middle of the English Channel. We're right on the edge of British and French territorial waters. Uh, it's a pretty calm day um, already. There have been three migrant boats spotted. All of these are classed as search and rescue missions. But the truth of it is, uh, this is a massive criminal enterprise that is organizing all of this, making vast sums of money. Uh, we're being humiliated. And the one point that as yet has not been made is this. We have spent in the last 10 years nearly 400 million pounds of taxpayers' money to try and deal with this problem. At least 50 million of it has been spent in France, spent giving money to French forces, building um, fencing, all the rest of it. And they are supposed to stop these boats crossing into British waters. The truth is, and I've got witness evidence that the French Navy now are actually escorting boats into British waters. Whether we'll get a shot of that today or not, I don't know. Uh, but we're out here, it's happening. What is truly incredible, here you've got the shipping lanes. I mean, these little dinghies going through the lanes. I'm absolutely amazed there's not been a collision and a very serious loss of life. There will be before too long. So we're in the middle of the shipping lanes. Mercifully, it's not foggy. We know there is a rib uh, carrying 10 people on it. They've been spotted wearing life jackets. We're now hunting for it. So we've seen it. We've seen the rib. We've had sight of it in the distance. We're now trying to hunt it down. It's much more difficult in the sea to find something that you can imagine. Not just us. Border force have left over. They're on their way out. A spot of planes in the air as well. So, I mean, you can see the sheer resources that the British state is having to put in to police this. I have no idea what it's costing, but it's a lot. So we've relocated the rib. We can now see it out the front. It's about a mile away. We're closing pretty fast. We are in British waters. Whether this one was escorted over for the French Navy or not, I can't say. What I can say is all of these people will now be allowed to stay in the United Kingdom. The numbers coming are now at a faster rate than at any point in the last few years, and we're only in the middle of May. If we don't do anything about this, it will be many, many thousands of people this year. And you'll notice 80% of them are young men coming in from all over the world. No doubt they think England is the land of milk and honey. Most of them will finish up working for very unpleasant slave masters living in their slave conditions. We should be ashamed of ourselves at every level. These people are taking massive risks, but they know the risks are worth it. We've now got the Coast Guard onto us um, asking what we're doing. Well, they've declared it a search and rescue mission, but you do get the feeling that they just want border force to come or the lifeboat to come. Um, and it's as if this is a story that isn't to be told. But you know what? Today, we're going to tell it. They're doing about four and a half knots. We're doing about 11. As you can see, they're about 300 yards, so we're closing. We'll obviously slow down because the weight from this boat's quite big. You can see the boat's absolutely packed, all being charged a minimum of 5,000 euros each for the criminal gangs to make this crossing. Uh, but imagine this if it puffed up. Imagine this if the sea was choppy. I, I, it's just extraordinary. We could put them under tow, but there's no point because we know that Border Force uh, Speedwell is at, uh, the vessel is on its way from Dover, so we will just kind of keep guard here. <laughs> we're having one or two language problems here. We're telling them a lifeboat's coming, but, they, but we're going to stay with them anyway. I mean, you can't believe when you see how close the water is to the edge. I mean, how massively overcrowded this is. You do get the feeling, no wonder they're wet and cold when they arrive, you do get the feeling that the criminal gangs over in Calais couldn't really give a damn about these people. Oh, they've lost something, look. They keep losing things. Whoops. They lost a pump earlier. That's a, a life jacket they've lost. You know, they have told us there were 22 of them. We've offered them water. We've offered them food. They don't want anything. Look, look out, they've lost something else now. That, that's the petrol can gone. This is Dover lifeboat. They've had a very busy morning. Uh, there were some vessels picked up earlier on. Obviously, we've seen the spot of planes. We found this vessel first. Uh, we've obviously told the lifeboat exactly where we are, given our position. They followed in on that. Uh, so they are now coming in to continue the rescue. Uh, and they will, in a minute, we'll watch them all being taken on board. Uh, and you know, I know a lot of people that work on the lifeboats. Uh, I've spoken to a few people that work for Border Force. They don't do this job to be a taxi service. 
for illegal immigrants once they reach the United Kingdom. And a lot of the guys uh, that are working on these crews are, are really very disenchanted with the job. You know, they joined it to genuinely save lives, fine, uh, but not for this trade. City of London lifeboat, Dover lifeboat. OK, so now we have Border Force. This is Speed World that's come out of Dover. Um, so we've got the lot here, really. Us that found it, the RNLI, and now we've got the Border Force. And, yeah, it will be in this situation. It'll be Border Force that board them uh, and Border Force that take them in and process them. I came out here today not knowing whether we would uh, find a boat, let alone be the first, or see a boat, let alone be the first vessel to actually uh, come across one. Um, it was pretty extraordinary uh, seeing how many people were in it uh, and how much water it was taking in too. And that's in calm condition. I do want the wider public to understand what's going on here. I want them to get into their heads the scale of what is going on, the criminality that's involved, not just on the other side, but for many when they get to the United Kingdom and finish up working, whether it's in car washes or whatever it is, but effectively becoming modern day slave labor to pay off the cost that they've paid to come. And you might as well have a big sign on the White Cliffs of Dover over there that says anyone that comes to Britain illegally can stay. Australia faced this a few years ago. They dealt with it. They said anyone that comes with this route won't be allowed to stay. That is what we have to do as well. We are being taken for a ride by everybody, including the French Navy, who are allowing these vessels to come into British territorial waters, despite the money we've given them to prevent it. Just to make it even more fun, we've had an engine problem. So we're hoping that we don't need to be towed in with the RNLI. But I think they fixed it. We are now going back into French waters. What we know is that a French naval vessel has been seen escorting boats, plural, escorting boats, and they're taking them out of French waters to get them into British waters, then they're off their hands. This is the other thing I wanted to film and see today, but we've already had the French Navy on the radio telling us, steer clear, it's a search and rescue operation. Two boats. Just had it confirmed that next to that, next to that vessel, there are two boats. You can probably see one on the left there now. So, here's the issue. Here's the issue. They should not be doing this. We paid them tens of millions to stop this. They are acting as an escort for illegal migrants into British waters, then they're off their hands. Because they know we want to go and film this, they've given us a warning on the radio to steer clear. It's a search and rescue operation. They always say that, hey, we've just rescued one ourselves. They don't want this story told, and if we were to get too close to this, I have no doubt the French Navy would board us, be pretty aggressive, and we'd probably finish up spending the night in Boulogne. Yep. This is a handover. So now we have a French naval vessel basically intimidating us. They don't want us getting film of what the French Navy is doing. Um, so that we, you know, even though we've just left French waters, uh, there is a feeling they don't want us filming their own little rib now with uh, the one full of illegal migrants. And it's just an attempt to cover up the whole story. It's outrageous. So now, so now what the French, what the big French vessel has done is come in, in between us and the migrant boats. Incredible. These migrants do not want to go back to France. There have even been reports of migrants firing flares at the French equivalent of the RNLI, uh, not wanting to be rescued. When they're sinking, they do want to be rescued. But no, and you saw with the boat earlier, when we, when we were trying to speak to the people in the boat, they just kept shouting, England, England. That's what it's about. So you're about to witness what is known in the trade as a handover. It's never been proven before. It's never been out as part of a national debate. There, you've seen the escorting of the French Navy of the dinghy into British waters. Their smaller boats staying with them for safety. And now, here we see on the horizon, the British border force coming to collect the illegal migrants from the French Navy who escorted them into British waters. That is it. It's a complete and utter outrage. We have just been told by UK Coast Guard that they will commandeer this vessel if we film the handover between the French Navy and the British Border Force. So it's not just the French threatening us, it's now, you know, somebody here I'm out with, they're threatening him with his living if we tell the truth about this story. This has got to be out there. 
Home Secretary, you've got to act. So the big French naval vessel now has gone. They've done their job. They've brought, escorted that little dinghy on the left there into British waters. They've now left their own rib off the big vessel just to make sure they're safe until the handover to the border force. This is an outrage. This story has not been told until today, and it really is important. Wow.